1947. Hopes for a new era of international peace dissolve. The Cold War begins in earnest. Family life reforms after the disruption of the war. While outside the project becomes exclusively military. 1948. The Chiefs of Staff set bomb production targets at 80 by 1957. The bomb project is now so big, the government calculates it is best to acknowledge its existence in Parliament and then prevent press reports with a D-notice. 1949. NATO is founded. The Chiefs of Staff increased their bomb requirements to 200. American B-29 nuclear bombers are stationed in Britain for the first time. 1950. An international balance of terror is now established. The Korean War breaks out as the Cold War reaches its peak. Man's control of nature arrives at a new level of sophistication. The wind scale number one reactor begins to produce plutonium. They talk about the trade unions holding the government to ransom. That's part of the mythology that the press pump out. But I tell you, when I was in the cabinet in 76, and the bankers, the IMF, sent a man under an assumed name to stay in a hotel in London, have a word with the governor of the Bank of England, had a word with the Chancellor Exchequer, had a word with the cabinet, and told us to cut our public expenditure by 4,000 million pounds, just told us. That's real power. Labour's attempts to modernise British industry came up against obstacles in the civil service and in particular in the Treasury. Britain slipped further down the league of industrial nations. But vast profits were generated in the city, which began to expand greatly as a world financial centre. One result of the strike was the strengthening of the right-wing union leaders. They had made it clear to the Tories that they were anxious above all to act within the constitution and had shown their ability to curb class conflict. Their behaviour left a legacy of anger and disgust in the labour movement. It reflected a failure of those on the left to win over the whole of the labour movement to socialist policies and break the hold on the working class of imperialist ideas. <laughs> 